Welcome to Mint Canvas. Today, I'll walk you through our latest product, the complete freelance dashboard for Google Sheets. We felt the need to create a digital tool that helps fellow freelancers reach their goals and keep their work on track. If you're interested in, in the template, the link is in the description below. This template includes many features and has 12 tabs. The first, the instruction page, is a summary of this video with the video link at the top. If you don't need it anymore, you can click on the little arrow by the tab's name and select Hide Sheet or Delete it. But we recommend keeping this page in case you need some clarifications. Before we start, let me remind you that the only cells you will interact with are the ones with the white background. So if a cell has a colored background, you don't need to touch it. Now let's start personalizing the template. Go to the setup page and begin the customization by adding your personal information. This will automatically fill the invoice generator tab. Fill in all the cells with your business information and then move to the payment information. Again, this will automatically fill the invoice. Write down your PayPal account, your bank name, recipient name and account number. We left also some space if you need to add other important information. You can also select the currency. This template works with any currency, just input this symbol in the cell and the other tabs will adapt. Next, you can personalize the dropdowns, starting with the client information. This dropdown refers to the client tracker tab and will help you find your clients easily. We already filled these dropdowns to make your job easier, but feel free to add or modify anything as you see fit. We also included a client status and a client type. The task setup refers to the task manager. These four dropdowns will be filled in with the task status, the assignee if you work in a team, the priority and the urgency. We already filled the table with examples, but you can add your own options and delete the ones we wrote. Next, there's the Finance Hub section. You will fill the dropdowns with all your income and expenses categories. Use the Finance Hub to calculate your business expenses and any income transactions. The last section refers to your clients. The first dropdown will appear in the communication log. You will write down the type of communication you use with your clients. The source dropdown will appear on the client tracker page and tells you from which source the client came. For example, a LinkedIn page or your personal website. We also included some examples to make it easier to use and save you time. We'll skip the dashboard for now and look at the service table. Here you will list all of the services you provide. You can also insert add-ons or packages. Give the service a name and write down what it entails. In the description, you can be more detailed. You can specify any travel or special material costs, for example, and then you can write the starting price for each service. We also included an outsource checkbox in case you use another provider for a specific service. You can personalize the page as much as you need. Moving on, we reach the client tracker. This page will help you keep track of all your clients like a CRM system. Here you can input all the data, the address and contact details will fill the invoice generator. The dropdowns will help you separate the different clients, tell you if you need to contact them for a follow-up, and remind you where the client came from. The brand and company is optional. The table at the top will let you know how many clients you have, how many of them are active, and how many are leads. This table is connected to the dropdown. If you change this name on the setup page, the formula will not work anymore. If you need to change it, let us know and we will adapt the formulas to your needs. But if you are used to Google Sheets, changing these formulas is actually quite easy. You click on the cell with the number and change the name between quotations. Write down the name you changed and the formula will work like before. Since this is a pretty big table with a lot of information, we decided to include two slicers to filter your data, allowing you to find your clients easily. To learn how they work, watch till the end of this video where we will explain how to use the slicers, how to edit them, and how to add or remove them. The next page is for keeping track of all your projects. As you can see, we added the filter feature to easily find the projects you need. Start by writing the name of the project, then you can update the status, select the client and the company will automatically appear. You can now insert up to three services or add-ons. The tracker will automatically calculate the cost based on what you wrote on the service page, which is the starting price. After the services, add a description of what the client wants. Then double-click on the cell to pick a start date and an end date. 
Once the cost is calculated, you can add the project budget and the quotation based on what the client needs. Finally, we included the actual cost of the project. This will appear in the Invoice Generator tab and it is not optional. The budget and quotation could be left empty, but make sure to always fill this cell or the Invoice Generator will not work. Finally, we left space for some notes. At the top of the page, an automated table will remind you how many projects are not started, in progress, done or cancelled. A notification will also show you how many active projects you currently have and a chart will summarize the table. Like the previous tab, we included four slices to filter your projects. You can filter them by client, status, start and end date. These slices work together, but you don't need to use them all or in this order. Now we move on to the task manager. For each project, you will have a set of tasks to perform. This page is where you write them all down and organize them by project. To do that, name your task and attach it to a project by picking one from the dropdown. The client will automatically appear. Double click on the next cell to select the due date, then pick the status from the dropdown menu. You can also add a priority and an urgency. If you work in a team, you can assign the task to your teammates. We also included a checkbox if the task is outsourced. Finally, you can add some notes. Once the task is completed, check the box and the task will appear as done. Here you can see how many tasks you planned, how many are finished and how many are left. The chart shows the percentage of the completion of your tasks. We also included four slicers to filter your data. You can filter by project, status, urgency or due date. The next page is where you can plan meetings with your clients and record all communications. You can set the date and time of the meeting. For the time, just input the numbers, followed by AM or PM, and the format will be applied automatically. From the dropdown, you select the type of meeting and the client's name. You can add a description of the meeting and a summary after the meeting is done. You can also add some action steps. We also added a checkbox to see if the client needs a follow-up meeting or not. We left space to add the link to the meeting and the participants. You can write up to five participants, but if you need more or less, just let us know. You can include attachments to easily share with the clients and, as usual, you have space for notes. At the top of the page, a table and a chart will let you know how many meetings you planned and how many of them need a follow-up. You can filter your communication log with these slicers. You can filter by date and type of communication. You can see only the meetings that need a follow-up or meetings specific to a client. Moving on, we reach the Invoice Manager, where you can track your invoices and payments. Start by writing the invoice number and then pick a project from the dropdown. The table will automatically show the client's name and the project's cost. You can write the amount paid by the client and keep track of the due amount and the status. This status will update automatically, letting you know which projects are paid, unpaid, partially paid or overpaid. Double-click to select the day issued and do the same for the due date. Once the client fully pays the amount, double-click and select the date. The overdue and due to day sections are automated and will return a checked box when something is overdue, which means there is no date in the fully paid on column or when the invoice is due today and the same column is empty. Once you fill the column with a date, the box will be unchecked. You can also add some notes. If an invoice is cancelled, you can check the first box at the start of the table and it will be removed from the total invoices table above. Just make sure that nothing is written in the amount paid column or it will be calculated in the table. This table will let you know how many invoices you have recorded, how much money you received and how much is still due. The chart will show you the status of your invoices. To filter your data, we added six slices. You can filter the invoice by status, project, and client. You can also filter the overdue invoices, the ones that are due today, or filter by the due date. The Invoice Generator page allows you to print your invoices without filling them manually. It will pull data from all the different tabs and help you prepare the invoices with a few easy steps. This page has a white background, but you can edit only selected cells. First, you can pick the invoice number from the drop-down. 
Once you do, all the information will automatically fill the invoice. The client's name, address, and contact information will be pulled from the client tracker. Your business information, address, and contact will be pulled from this setup page. The table below will display the project name, the services included, and the final price. As you can see, we left two white rows below. You can edit those if you need to add some extra services or add-ons, but remember that they will not appear on, on the Invoice Manager page. All the payment details are highlighted below. Next, the subtotal cell will calculate all the services, including the ones you added in the white cells. You can also write taxes or any extra fee you need to add to the total due. Since this page has a white background but is filled with formulas, it is locked. You can't modify this page without an error message popping up. To change the logo, for example, go to the menu, click Insert, then Image, and then select Insert Image over Cells. After the error message appears, click OK and place your logo. To print this page, go to File and select Print. Make some final adjustments and it will be ready to print. We also included an annual finance hub to track your income and expenses. Start by double-clicking on the white cell. Select the starting month and year by picking a date from the calendar. The day is irrelevant. The rest of the months will adapt accordingly. In the income table, you will write the day of the transaction and the description, then pick a category from the drop-down and write the amount. The full date is automated. The same goes for the expenses table. You start by writing the day, adding a description and picking a category. Finally, write the amount. As you can see, the charts above will summarize the tables below. Every month works the same. The donut charts will show you each month's income and expenses breakdown as a percentage. Below the month and year, a table summarizes your total income and expenses. It will then show the amount left for each month. To quickly reach the month you're interested in, you can either scroll right or use the quick links on the dashboard. Let's now move on to the calendar. This page is a read-only page and will show you the tasks for each day. This page is locked and the only cell you will interact with is the one with the date. To choose one, double-click the white cell and pick a month. You can select a random day because the calendar always starts with the first of the month. Once you select a date, the table below will pull data from the task tracker and show you all tasks for the selected month. You will see a task status, name and corresponding project. This is an overview page to check what you have planned for the month and how your schedule is organized. You cannot check the boxes from here. If you try to modify this page, the same error message mentioned in the invoice generator will appear. If the message pops up accidentally, click on the X or the Cancel button. We can now go to the dashboard. This page will prove useful after you use this spreadsheet for a few months. The dashboard summarizes each aspect of your business. Starting from the left, you have today's date and the little calendar where today is highlighted. Since this is a big template, we included a navigation menu to quickly navigate through the tabs. Below the navigation menu, we included a button to easily reach the links of the Finance Hub section. Just click on the word here and you will see the section where the links are provided. We included a quick overview of your clients. You'll be able to see that information all in one place. Just pick a client from the drop-down menu and the corresponding data will pop up. You will see the company name, phone number and email, as well as the type of client, status and address. Finally, we included notifications, letting you know how many cl active clients you currently have. Below the client's management, there's an overview of your meetings. A notification will tell you how many meetings you have planned for today. You can see which clients you are meeting and the type of communication. The invoice management section will show you a table to track your invoices. You can use this planner for more than one year or start using it at any point in the year. To start seeing your data, write the year in the white cell and pick a month from the dropdown. The table below will pull data from the 12 months selected. It will show you the total invoices for each month. You will see how many are unpaid, partially paid, paid or overpaid. You will see the total due, the paid amount, and the money left to receive. The chart above will summarize the table month by month. 
If you scroll right, you see an overview of your projects. Pick the project's name from the drop-down menu and check the project's status, end date, the client's name, and the budget. A notification below will tell you how many active projects you currently have. Then, we included an overview of your tasks. Pick a task from the drop-down menu, and you will see the project, the status, the due date, the urgency, and the assignee. Below, a notification will remind you how many tasks are left to do. The final section of the dashboard contains an annual overview of your finance hub. The months will start from the one you picked in the finance hub. The numbers by their side allow you to quickly reach the desired month. The table gives you a quick overview of your annual income, expenses, and amount left divided by month. The chart above summarizes the table, quickly showing the highest earning month, the month with the highest expenses, and the one with the highest amount left. With the dashboard, we conclude the tour of the template. What do you think of our freelance hub? We try to include as many useful features as we can think of, but we'd love to hear your feedback. Now, as we promised, we will explain how to use the slicers. Start by picking up one slicer and click on All. A menu will appear. From the menu, you can select the options you want to see. You can also search for what you need. In this case, for example, a client's name. At first, all options are available, including the blank cells. You can either unselect the options you don't need, or if you need just a specific client, for example, you can click on the word Clear. If you click on Clear, everything will be unchecked, letting you choose from the menu. You can also search for the name. Once you pick an option, you can move on to the next slicer and repeat the process. These slicers will work together, but you don't necessarily have to use them all or in the order we included. To remove the filter, go back to the slicer and click on the filter symbol on the left. Once the menu pops up, click Cancel at the bottom and the slicer will reset. To be sure that no filters are active, check that all of the slicers say All like at the beginning. To edit a slicer, click on it. Once you do, the three dots will appear on the right. Click on the dots and the menu will pop up. The menu allows you to edit, copy or delete the slicer. If you pick on edit, another menu will appear where you can modify the slicer. The data section allows you to select a different column to filter. As you can see, you can click on column and all the table options will appear. If you want to filter a different column, click the drop down menu and pick the one you need. The Customize section allows you to change the fonts and colors of your slicers. If you want to add more slicers or you accidentally delete one, you can copy an existing slicer. If you do that, you won't need to change the color or dimensions. Just edit the column. These slicers can be positioned wherever you need them. They appear above the cells and can be moved or resized. Pretty easy, right? You can use the slicers even if you are a Google Sheets beginner. So try them out and see how they can help you filter data. I hope this template helps you organize and simplify your work life and reach all your business goals. Thank you so much for watching and happy planning.